You work a dead end job, your life is going nowhere, you don't know what to do, and then you remember it, a note left to you by your grandfather on his deathbed. You open the letter and discover that you've inherited his farm, to do with as you please. This is Stardew Valley, I'm Tiger, and this is a Hyper Review. Stardew Valley has a narrative experience that I didn't think I'd enjoy, especially seeing as how I grew up on a farming regional Australia, and if there's one thing I don't want to be reminded of, it's how I felt about that. And yet, despite all of that, I found the story that this game tells charming, engaging, and something that I genuinely wanted my character to be a part of. This might be largely due to the fact that the world it presents is highly idealistic. Everybody is reasonable and caring and has the interests of others at heart, and even though there isn't one single friendship bond that exists throughout the entire village, no two people are really enemies. Nobody hates anybody because of their race or gender or sexuality or occupation. The concept of death exists, but it doesn't apply to anybody that you really come to care about. You get to own a property and care for it, and earning money is easy, and even though you work hard, it feels fulfilling, and you're generally free to do as you please. The story of Stardew Valley is, ultimately, Gen Y heaven. At the core of Stardew Valley's gameplay are a number of activities related to running your farm. How you run your property is entirely up to you. You can cultivate fruit trees and vegetable crops, care for livestock, catch fish, mine for minerals and precious gems, or forage for resources in the wild, although you are encouraged to do all of these things to live a well-rounded life. Each of these activities is relatively simple, and the more you level up your skills and the better tools you get, the easier they become. But in order to properly run a farm that focuses on all of these things, you have to manage your energy resource and cultivate good working relationships with the residents of the valley. The interface that you use to farm to land and earn to monies is relatively simple, but is burdened with moments of extreme frustration. Character movement is controlled by default with the WASD keys, and all actions are carried out using the left and right mouse buttons, though these controls, as well as the hotkeys for actions like opening the inventory, can be customised in game. This easy to learn control scheme is really only marred by the fact that controlling which direction you perform your actions in is not always reliable, despite the fact that it's meant to be based on which portion of the screen the player clicks in, and the fact that attempts to change the direction of an action when timing is a factor can be met with a lack of responsiveness to this directional system. My biggest criticism of Stardew Valley though is that it has a lot of areas that are just not accessibility friendly. Although a lot of the game's mechanics are quite simple, it has a couple of additional mechanics that are either explained only through vague in-game events that unlock randomly and indeed may never actually be seen unless the player is doing a full clear, to those that are simply not given an in-game explanation at all, leaving players to either consult the internet or waste a bunch of in-game money trying to unlock secrets that may be beyond them. Things like the fact that trees will only grow if the 3x3 space around them is clear, and you can't move a tree once planted are tough lessons to learn when you drop at least 2,000 gold on a single sapling, and a young boy telling you that he wishes his mother would let him go out bug hunting only to become disgusted and upset with you when you try to give him a snail as a gift is confusing at best. The skill system, fodder collection mechanic, and other essential items also fall into this category. But those are really only small fry issues, especially when it comes to the game's biggest screw to gamers with physical issues, reaction timing issues, and a host of other problems. The fishing minigame. In order to catch fish within Stardew Valley, players must carefully control the duration of mouse clicks to raise and lower a green bar, ensuring that it is always within a certain proximity to a sporadically moving fish icon. Unfortunately, the fish icon is capable of moving significantly better than the fishing meter, which is also subject to momentum effects when changing directions between up and down. These effects can be mitigated through the use of in-game items, however, these items are locked behind increasing one's fishing skill, which doesn't really help the players who need them the most. That's not to say that the game is completely without merit here. The devs have added some nice accessibility features that other games don't, including a zoom feature, the option to have an overlay show you exactly where your actions will occur, and the ability to control visual effects such as flashes and screen shakes. 
Where Stardew Valley has some failings in the accessibility department, it does its best to make up for them in terms of representation and diversity. The player character has numerous romantic options available to them, both male and female, and all marryable NPCs are effectively bi or pan. All of the characters have well-rounded personalities, and a number of them have been coded quite obviously as having things like ADHD, depression and social anxiety, amongst a number of other things. The cast has, at the point I'm up to, one disabled character and a handful of non-white characters, which is great to see. The skin colour and gender of the player character can be customised at character creation, and the only things the latter affects are which locker room you use in the spa, and, depending on the gender of whom you marry, whether you get kids via birth or adoption. Quite pleasingly, this is a game that doesn't enforce gender roles in its character building. Most excitingly for me though, is that one of the characters, Sam, the one I chose to marry because his name is the same as my boyfriend's name, is identifiably ADHD. I was sceptical at first about how I'd go playing something that simulated farming, but Saju Valley really manages to satisfy my own ADHD needs. The game has a lot of different mechanics and activities that can be completed, and every in-game day brings a new series of tasks and quests for you to look at, so you're unlikely to feel as though you have nothing to do. The feedback and rewards provided by the game are spread out in such a way that you're constantly getting a satisfaction response, which makes hyperfocus really easy, while the sheer number of tasks there are to perform and the incredibly small amount of time that each task takes means that you're unlikely to get frustrated with just doing the same thing over and over and over again. The only thing that gets really annoying is that there are a lot of cutscenes where the characters move so slowly, and no dialogue happens when the characters are moving, and sometimes they just stand there pointlessly, even though the cutscenes are skippable, I really want to see the story, but jeez does it test my patience. Still, even though it has some flaws, Stardew Valley is certainly something I recommend to you if you're looking for a cute lifestyle scene with decent representation, and the illusion that you have direction and purpose in your life, and that what you do matters on a community-wide scale. This game is calming and nice and just kind of relaxing. Have you played it? Who did you pick to marry? What do you do on your farm? Let's discuss it in the comments! Okay, I love you, bye bye!